Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how you can zoom in and out of video or images inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So particularly when it comes to images, if you were to just leave a static image on the screen for a YouTube video, then generally that's going to look really boring. So one thing you can do to give the illusion of movement is to have DaVinci Resolve zoom in and out of those images. So one visual way of doing zooms is called a dynamic zoom, which is perfect when you want to zoom from start to end across one shot. So we can find the dynamic zoom in the edit page by going to the bottom left of the preview window. So there's a drop down here by default it's on the transform which allows you to adjust the size and position of your clip but if we drop down here we can switch over to dynamic zoom so inside of dynamic zoom we're going to see two boxes the green which is the green which is the starting box and then the red which is the ending box so whatever is within the bounds of the starting and ending boxes is what you're going to see at the beginning of the clip and the end of the clip so as it is right now it's going to start in with a zoomed in shot and then it's going to expand outwards to reveal the entire image before this will actually do anything though we need to toggle on dynamic zoom for the clip so we can do that in the inspector coming down here to dynamic zoom and toggling it on so now if we hit play in the timeline, we should get that zoom effect. Let's go ahead and hit play. So we start zoomed in and then it zooms out to reveal the full image. So if we want to adjust the bounds of the zoom, we can simply click on the four corners and bring them in. For instance, if we want to zoom in rather than zoom out, then we just have the ending box be smaller than the starting box. You can also reposition them around the screen if you want the image to pan as well. So we could pull this down here expand the starting box and now if we hit play and now if we go to the start of the clip and hit play we should have a zoom in effect and you can notice a little bit of panning because it's aiming towards the bottom of the shot also with dynamic zoom you can add easing so by default the speed is constant but if you want to slow that down at the start and end you can change it to ease in and ease out or if you want it to be slow just at the start you do ease in or ease out for slow just at the end so let's do ease in and out and show how that can look so let's go ahead and hit play you see that most of the speed is in the middle and it should slow down at the end once again so just by using dynamic zoom you can already achieve some pretty cool zoom effects and then you don't really need to mess around with numbers or keyframes okay so let's toggle dynamic zoom off and show off a couple other ways you can do zooms uh, first, let's add another image into our timeline. So I'm just going to add a bar graph above our bottom image. Um, now you might notice that any image you bring in here stretches to the top of the screen. This is actually more like a 400 by 400 pixel square. So I'm going to shrink it back down to its original size. And let's get out of dynamic zoom mode so that it actually looks accurate. And right now we're in dynamic zoom, so it's not actually going to show that zoom. So let's change the mode from dynamic zoom to transform. Okay, so now we are working with our normal zoom over here on the right. Uh, you can see the transform zoom property. I just adjust this by pulling it up and down. By default, the X value and the Y value are both linked together, but you can unlink that if you need to stretch in one dimension rather than both at the same time. So we can also reposition by using the transform gizmos and just position it wherever we need it on the screen. And you'll notice that the numbers get updated automatically. So how do we animate this zoom property? Well, let's go to the start and let's add a keyframe. Assuming that this is the size and position you want at the start, then we can keyframe the zoom property and optionally the position as well. And then uh, let's zoom in a bit on the timeline here by hitting the plus a few times. We just go to a position where we want the zoom to be done and change the value of the zoom. So we can take the zoom X here and let's say we wanted to zoom in a little bit. So I will update the value because we already created one keyframe at the start here. When we change the value on another part of the timeline, a new keyframe is automatically created. So keyframes are for animation. And what Resolve will do is it will change the value between two keyframes until it reaches the value on the right side. So on the left keyframe will be your starting value and on the right will be your ending value. So we start with a 0.6 zoom and we end up with a 0.71 zoom. And Resolve basically automatically calculates how fast it should increase the value in order to animate the property to the second keyframe. And uh, basically that's keyframing in a nutshell for every property. So now we can go to the start here and hit play and we should have our pie chart zoom in a little bit. 
So now the only problem with this way of zooming is that it's only doing one of these images at once. So we played the zoom on video track two, but not on video track one. Maybe you would run into the case where you actually want to animate both at the same time. So I'm going to reset the zoom on the pie chart two, and we'll also reset the position. And I'll take the base zoom here and I'll make it something so we can still see the background. And maybe on the background, I also increase the zoom to get rid of these black edges. And now let's suppose that we wanted to have both of them zoom in a little bit at the same speed. So what we can use is an adjustment clip in order to apply one effect to everything underneath that effect. So if we put the adjustment clip on video track three, not created yet, but we can do that right now with a right click add track, uh, then any tracks under it are going to be affected by that adjustment clip. We go to effects library and then effects adjustment clip drag this over those two clips on bottom and now we can animate a zoom property so i'll go to the start here adjustment clip selected make sure of that with the orange box and i guess we'll do a keyframe there with zoom 1.0 so currently it's not affecting anything underneath it's just multiplying its zoom value by one and let's go let's say to the end here and let's zoom in to 1.2 so over the duration of this adjustment clip, the zoom in is going to increase 20%. So let's go back to the start, hit play. And what you'll see is that all of the underlying clips are affected by that zoom. So adjustment clips are really handy for doing zooms, but also can be used for color adjustments or basically anything else that you want to apply to underneath clips. So don't forget about them, especially if you're working with a lot of video timelines. One last thing I want to point out for this video is that just like with dynamic zoom, you can also add easing to the speed of your property inspector based zooms. So whenever you have a zoom on a clip, you can click on this little thing that looks like curves uh, on the bottom right of your clip. You'll see that each of your video clips have them. And when you click on that, you may see the properties that you've changed, you've added keyframes to. So here you can actually see the keyframes and you can drag them around as well to change the values here. If you prefer to do that, then in the inspector. And what we can do is change the curve on these. So right now they're all set to linear, which means it's going to be a flat increase of value over time. It's not going to accelerate or decelerate. But if we click on these curve options, then we can change the curve for this animation. So with this one, I add a handle to the right side. And as things are right now, it's going to slope up fast at the start and slow at the end. As you can see, it kind of flattens out here. That means the value isn't changing much across time, or in other words, it's going to decelerate or slow down. <clears throat> and then because it still has to make up for that with the rest of this transition, it's going to be faster at the start by compared to the end. So if I go here and hit play, we should see it moving pretty fast and we get to the end and it slows down a bunch. Of course, these handles that it creates, you can pull them around and adjust them. And that is going to affect uh, the animation between these two points. You can even pull the handle way out here, in which case it will zoom in past the end keyframe and then drop back down to the started keyframe. So I'm going to hit play here and you can see how it zooms in a lot and then it kind of zooms out. Uh, so there's a lot of flexibility with using these. You can also go on the left keyframe, set a curve handle point with this option. For simplicity's sake though, it's probably gonna be a little easier to control if you only use one handle. But if you spend a little bit of time adjusting these, then you can get your transition between the two keyframes to move at the speed you want it to. All right, so that's basically all of the basics of doing zoom ins and zoom outs inside of DaVinci Resolve. Okay, really quickly before we wrap up, let's jump over to the cut page to show where you can find similar tools uh, for doing zooms. So if you click on a clip in the cut page, the zoom options are gonna be located in the preview window right down below. So there's an option here called transform. And by the way, if you don't see this bar, click on the settings icon click on the tools icon in the bottom left hand of the preview window and you'll reveal all of these. But anyway, on the transform tab here, you have zoom width and zoom height, which are currently locked together for your current clip. So you can zoom in and zoom out same way as before. You can also open up the inspector inside of Resolve 17. It didn't actually used to be there, but you have the same controls over here that you have in the edit page, being able to keyframe and set values using the inspector instead. And then also dynamic zoom, you can find that as the third tab here works exactly like before. The uh, red box is the 
ending point and then the green box is the starting point and you just drag the boxes and resize them as they were showing you at the start of this video. And then that's pretty much it for doing zooms inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So I hope this video has helped you guys out. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.